church. Welcome, 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 welcome to our time of fellowship tonight. We're excited to be in the Lord. We've got activations. We've got encounters. We're going to step into revelation tonight. We're going to make declarations tonight. We have a whole meal prepared for each of us to engage in the Lord. Welcome online family. We love you and we're so glad you're with us. Hey, would you do us a favor? And if you're online, would you hit that like button and would you subscribe to our channel? And then you want to click on that little bell and that lets you know every time we're live, it'll go straight to your phone or your computer and it'll tell you we're live and then you can join us. You're welcome to share it in your socials, your Facebook, your Instagram. But we just want to invite everyone into this precious time. So we're going to pray, and then we're going to receive our call from our shofar tonight into our time of worship. So let's just do that. Let's just um, orient our hearts. If you see your heart like a satellite dish, we want to take it and aim it towards the Lord right now. We want to aim our heart towards the Holy Spirit. We want to pick up his signals. We want to receive from heaven what heaven is doing, what heaven is saying in this moment. We want to hear. We're asking the Lord to um, transform us, to open our heart, and to let our heart beat with his tonight. So, Father, here we are before you. We bring you all that you've given, and we offer it back to you in joyful thanksgiving. Be glorified in our time together now, in Jesus' name. Okay, we're going to receive our call from our shofar.
my soul I will thirst for Him And Him alone He has come Like the rain The shower's on There in plain So my heart And tongue
Lift up our hands. I want to let us take advantage of the promise of prayer in the Bible. The Apostle Paul said this. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of all the families of earth that are named in Christ Jesus. That he would, according to the riches of his glory, strengthen us with might through his Spirit in our inner man so that Christ may dwell permanently, continually in our hearts by faith. So not just believing, but also with power, this truth comes. So let's now those hands up one more time and let them fill our hearts. Let them come dwell big in our hearts. Let's acknowledge you're in my heart. You dwell in my heart. You, Lord Jesus, have made my heart your home. I receive you. We worship you. We praise you. You're here in our heart. You're here. You made a home for yourself in our heart. Dwelling in our midst. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Oh. Yeah. You're like
like me, you can let your imagination begin to fill your heart with images. God dwelling, living, vibrantly alive. And we're rooted and grounded in love. It just gets bigger and better. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. Let's clap the hands and thank God. I, I did. I do. Yeah, it's on. Oh, it's okay. Try it again. Try it again. Okay. Are you going to be seated? Okay. Okay. That was a good prayer. If nobody else heard it, God did. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, this is on. This is on. Are we working? This is on. This is on. This is not on. All right. We'll go with this. We'll need another mic then, please. All right. I, wanna, I want you to hear a testimony. This is the offering time. And Steve and Veronica, why don't you guys come on up because they've got a story. And it's a story that we'll all relate to, and it's faith that will be released for all of us because so many times we find God's provision in the midst of testing and trials. So come on up. Come on up so everybody online can also be connected. So, all right, I'll let you start. You have just a few minutes, and if I grab the mic, that means you went too long. <laughs> okay. Oh, this guy, he knows, he knows. He, and Veronica. Really long. <laughs> Hi, guys. Um, hi, Steve. Hi, Pastor. So this summer we went on a trip to Big Sur, and uh, it was a seven-day trip, and it was very uh, fun till the, like the last two days. Our car broke down. We're stuck in Big Sur. Before that happened, we're supposed to go to San Francisco. San Francisco. Veronica's like, never mind, let's cancel. So we went to go see the sunset. That didn't turn out good. The summer fog rolled in, so we just turned back around. As we turned around, our vehicle had died on the PCH up north. So thank God our uncle was there. He never left us. He stayed behind with us. And uh, uh, what happened? It just so happens that my uncle is a mechanic, so it's, Yay. my whole family was there. They ended up leaving, and my uncle's like, you know what, I'm just going to stay another day with you guys. I want to hang out with you guys, and the Lord had it planned all along that who we would need the most at the time was going to be there. He stuck around. He helped get Stephen back and forth from Monterey to back to the campsite, and it was, it was a lot, but the Lord was really gracious and really like provided for us during that time. And uh, we're just really thankful. And I, I just want to encourage everyone that's maybe going through, because we're literally like in the wilderness, like how are we going to get out of here? <laughs> and um, he really provided a way out. And I just want to encourage everyone that's maybe going and walking through a wilderness that um, the Lord is with you. And can I just pray for everybody? Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> Father God, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for walking us through our wilderness, Lord, literally walking us through Big Sur, Lord. And I, I thank you that you're doing that for others, Lord, that may find themselves in a, in a wilderness where they can't see a way out. But I thank you that you have provided your son, Jesus, as our way out, Lord God, and the one who walks with us through it, Lord God. And I thank you for just your love that you have for all your children and that you're with us even sometimes when it doesn't feel like it and we can't see it you're making a way and you're so present with us father and i thank you lord in jesus name i pray amen amen go ahead you too steve play, play a prayer lord god i just ask you right now father just to like my wife said make a way father for the people who feel like they're stuck and they're alone father i thank you that you are with them you, like you are with us, Father, and I pray, Lord, that you continue on showing them and guiding them and lighting the path for them to continue to go forward, Lord, like you did for us and you continue to do for us. And I pray, Lord, that you help them not to let go of hope, Lord, and just bless them, Father, and be with them and strengthen them, Lord God, like you strengthen us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Thank you, Steve. Very good. You did it. <laughs> there are more, many more exciting details that you could hear and get. 
encourage you to talk to them afterwards. When we are in those moments, it is we can be overwhelmed in the circumstance, or many times we have no choice but to try to find the Lord in the circumstance. And the more we practice that, the more we become acquainted or have the experience that he really does show up. So I'm going to ask the Lord's blessing on our giving tonight, that he would just where are we in this journey of this year, 2023? Where are the struggles that we've been faced with? What do we know to do? What don't we know to do? What can't we do? What must God do for us to get to where? And let's renew our expectancy in our giving tonight and in our receiving. Amen? Amen. Would you join with me? Father, in Jesus' name, we know that giving and receiving is often one of the keys that you use to unlock the, pro, the, the future. And you call us from where we see the life going to where you have provided for us in the sun. And so thank you right now. We bring to you ourselves in the season we are in regarding particularly areas that have not released or changed or yielded to Jesus our Lord. Places that we have need of real help that we ourselves cannot provide for. So we say in the name of our Lord Jesus, release for us help from the sanctuary. Send us help from your holy sanctuary in heaven and call us into a fresh agreement and faith and hope in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's go ahead and worship as we give. We're going to pass the buckets out so you can you'll be able to give from where you are. Just 
spirit inside me and what else can I do but worship so show me the rhythm of stay together <clears throat> what else can we do when you provide for us your Holy Spirit deep inside strengthened with might through your spirit in our inner man indeed Christ dwells in our heart through faith and we're rooted and grounded in love oh sure our soul may not always agree our circumstances might even appear that it's not so, but it's true. And with the Spirit of God, we worship you. Holy Spirit, you are the one that allows us to present the things that are God. You were the one that offered up Jesus as a perfect sacrifice, as he did so by your Spirit. You're the one that enabled us today to give to you, bring to our Lord Jesus tithes and offerings and faith and expectancy anticipating God's coming something wonderful is happening in our midst things we have not yet seen but they're here now yet to be revealed but so close we're aware of it Lord thank you that you never left us nor forsake us thank you that you promised to fulfill your promises because of your faithfulness and ability Thank you for this hour we live in and the opportunity you've given us to expect and to believe and to receive. We give you these tithes and offerings. We give you our faith, our expectancy, our hope, our love, and we receive from you abundance. Abundance of joy, abundance of peace, abundance of breakthrough, abundance of provision, abundance of prosperity, abundance of healing we receive abundance even now we receive here in the house online we receive we receive what you're giving us today in jesus name amen amen praise the lord well before you're seated go find about three or four people welcome them into service let them know that god's love is here his provisions here christ is here and i want to say hi to everybody online. God bless you. It, tonight is going to be a precious night because something's percolating in the atmosphere. We can, it's become super, we're super aware of it in prayer. That's where he always first begins to make himself known that he's, uh, has something that he's accomplished that he's about to release and bring forth. Everything was accomplished in the sun. All it is is us coming into a greater receiving. So tonight is your night to receive. And don't let anything kind of dissuade you from it. Just stay focused. Keep pulling, pulling from home. Because where you are, God is. And he's there to bring the outworkings of his spirit in your life, into my life, all of our lives, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, blessings. I'm going to want to bring up a chair. I do. Or a stool, at least, for I can sit. I'm going to introduce Allie. Welcome, everybody. Uh, two things I would like to share with you. Next, we're doing through our Bible reading, and tonight when we, we, practice, we go into the Scripture for a bit, we're going to go through Revelation chapter 1 through 4 and its application. And then next week, we're going to do the Sermon on the Mount, which is Matthew 5, 6, and 7. We're taking portions of our daily reading 
and highlighting them so that we can um, all together grow up in the scripture and, and get the help that that needs. And then the following week, this will be the 5th, 6th of May, we're going to do our first corporate prayer meeting and an evening service, an all night, not all night, but an all prayer meeting like, like the old days. And I think you're going to really enjoy it. Calling all intercessors, calling all believers to join us from 6 to 7.30 on, on J September the 6th. That's two weeks from tonight. And I believe we together, we do this prayer through the, through the day, and I thank God for everybody who comes. I encourage everybody to come. We're having people now starting to come and spend the day here. You know, if, a lot of times life is not where you want it to be, where you are, but if you come over here, it'll be exactly where you want it to be. You kind of get absorbed into the kingdom, into faith, into hope, into the heart of the, the spirit as he moves amongst the believers, and you, you come into a close family connection. So consider joining us. We start every watch on the, on the even hour, so 6 a.m., 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 12 noon, 2 p.m., 4 p.m., up to 6 p.m., and then we come into service. And I just encourage you, if you to give God that time. If you can't be here, then set up a couple hours from where you can be, and we are one spirit so we can be joined together in many locations. So looking forward to what God's going to do uh, in these this next few weeks so praise the lord ali go ahead so you're going to start with how do we at the activation time yeah yeah um, we just felt like the lord was opening up doors to activate what we've been reading about in the word and what he's saying um and for us to enter into those things uh and so we've been hearing a lot from kathleen in our uh, staff meetings and she is carrying such just such a spirit of God, such a life on the inside of her. And she got a word about expectancy and about God's glory just exploding. And um, she made a video for us, which we'll probably share at a different day, because um, I wanted to share something with you. But I, the Lord reminded me of something when I walked into our staff meeting yesterday um, and I sat down, and this picture like flashed in front of my eyes, and it was something that I saw in the physical when I was on a missions trip to India, and um, we happened to be going to minister at a witchcraft village, and there was like maybe an hour or so, maybe longer, of desert land where no one lived. Nothing was there. Nothing was even alive. It was like tumbleweeds and just dry, um, lifeless hour of driving and uh, on the way there. And as we're driving, I'm looking out the window, and this is the picture that I saw again during our staff meeting yesterday, was what I was looking at when I was looking out the window. As we're driving and I'm looking at nothing, no life at all, um, this something started bubbling up on the inside of me. And I was looking out the window, and I had grown up having just... Uh, you know, kind of experiences in the in spiritual things, in both heaven and then not heaven, <laughs> and um, with just fearful things. And um, so I had, when they said, we're going to go now minister in this witchcraft village, something I knew that I knew that I knew I'm about to see God be greater than the enemy. And I knew that here, but I didn't know it at all because I, I had other experiences. And so as we're driving and I was looking out the window and as this thing is building in my spirit of like expectation and this feeling like, I'm getting so excited. Like, and none of us were really talking. We were all just kind of like trying to listen for what the Holy Spirit was saying. And all I could say was, you're so big, you're so big, you're so big. And I couldn't stop. That's the only thing that popped into my brain. And the more, the closer we got, the more this thing was just building on the inside of me, this spirit of expectation. And what it was, I think, was faith. And um, that I get to see God do something great. And in this way, in this place of fear that used to be occupied by fear and used to be occupied by bad experiences, was now going to be filled with truth. 
And so as we were sitting in our staff meeting, I had that same thing stirring up on the inside of me. And I heard this whisper, and it said, something big is about to happen. And I knew it on the inside, and I started getting so excited and expectant. And I just thought, and granted, like, in the natural, I don't know. (laughs) But in the spirit, I was so, it was so alive to me and still is so alive to me. And I knew that was for me individually and also you individually, us as a body, that something big is about to happen. And I'm just going to say what he's saying over your life just in case you didn't know, something big is about to happen in your life, in this place, in this body, in this church, in our personal lives, in our bodies, something big is about to happen. And Kathleen and I were talking about this word, and she's going to share on Sunday, but about glory, the glory of the Lord coming. And I knew, yes, yes, the glory of the Lord and our hunger for Jesus where in that valley place, in that place where there was no life, um, I got to hear the Lord's voice before I got to the something big is about to happen. Um, And something big did happen, and that's a story for another time. (laughs) People gave their lives to the Lord, and it was beautiful, and I saw him be bigger than the enemy, and it was really powerful. Um, But he started speaking to me about the valley and the importance of that place. Um, that we get to, our beloved is with us in that place, and we come up from the wilderness leaning on our beloved, which means he's in the wilderness with us. If we come out leaning on him, that means we were leaning on him in that place that we met up with him there. And I think that's the point, and that's what we're in, is that the exciting place is the place we're in. And um, one of the big things that's happening is we get to see Jesus. And on the inside, not just with our words or with what we know we're supposed to do, but deep on the inside, we're going to cry out for him. I I need you, Jesus, and you alone. I want to see your face. I want to hear your voice. I want to follow you. I want to give you my whole life. Deep on the inside of us. And um, I just feel that stirring. So can we all just stand up and... um, Yeah, I'm just so amazed, God, at who you are, and I'm so grateful that you're a father that gives good gifts to his children, and I thank you, God, that you're not a God that, um, like even he said, faith without works is dead. How much more is the father going to pour out of his spirit on you, on me, on our house, on our church, in this world, and so... Father, I just thank you for what you're doing, that there's so much building, there's so much, and and you're just filling us, God, to overflowing with a revelation and a hunger and thirst for Jesus, to meet with Jesus where we're completely unsatisfied with fake, we're completely unsatisfied with religion, we're completely done away with our, our hunger for sin or for the things of this world. But Father, I just thank you that you're bringing us to a place where our hearts are longing with expectation, knowing that I get to see Jesus today. I get to see Jesus. And I thank you, Father, for that. And I just ask, Holy Spirit, that you fill up, fill us up, God, every person that you fill us up from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. In Jesus' name. And it's not by might, and it's not by power. It's by my spirit, says the Lord. And the Holy Spirit's in the room. And the Holy Spirit's moving and alive and active. And so I just thank you, Holy Spirit, for that you're on the inside of us. That you're doing a work on the inside, the inside out, where we'll overflow. We'll love you. And we'll receive your love. And I just thank you right now. We receive you. You receive a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit right now in your life. And can you just say, I receive you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. And you can stay standing, and we're going to do declarations. Um, So we've been looking at 
Revelation chapters 1 through 5. And so we're just going to use our mouth and speak truth and declare what he's saying, <laughs> the reality of who Jesus is. It's so powerful. Um, so we I just took bits from Revelation 1 through 5. And if you, um, I don't know if maybe we can put this online at some point, but um, it's a good thing. There's places where you can pause and let him talk to you and really go deep. So we're going to say it together. There's one slide that we're going to pause on, but we're just going to say it all together. So this is from Revelation 1 through 5. My father, I come to you as a loved daughter. I come right now with complete boldness, knowing that you are the Alpha and the Omega. Yeah, you can do the next one. You can just keep going. So I boldly proclaim that you, Jesus, are he who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Jesus, with hair white like wool and whose eyes are like a flame of fire, your feet are like fine brass in your voice as the sound of many waters. I worship you. You are the first and the last. You are he who lives and was dead and behold, you are alive forevermore. You have the keys of Hades and death. Oh God, cause me to return to my first love Make me a faithful lover. Remove from me anything that hinders love. And we're going to pause here. I lay down and repent of idolatry, sexual immorality, compromise, living a lukewarm life, and unforgiveness. And I'm just going to give a second for you to have your own conversation with the Lord for like 10 seconds. Yeah, you can go to the next one. Open my ears, Lord, so I can hear you. Open my eyes so I can see you. I want to know you, Jesus. Before your throne is a sea of glass. In the midst of the throne and around the throne are four living creatures full of eyes in front and in back. I join them now saying, holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. The 24 elders fall down before you who sits on the throne and worship you who lives forever. They cast their crowns before your throne. We join them now saying, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. You alone are worthy. You are the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. You have prevailed. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. You may be seated. That's, that's a powerful, taking the scripture to make proclamation. Very, very powerful. Thank you, Allie. Super, super Allie. Not super, super Allie. I like that. <laughs> uh, super duper Allie. All right. Revelation. Let's just talk about that. Those four chapters, five verse, chapters for a second. And then we're going to break up into some small groups so we can have prayer for one another and discuss or ask questions about 
we, we want to, we're wanting to activate ourselves and open our ears to hear and to hear Christ in each other and the word of God that we're carrying and then to be also bring the truths that God's given us that we've discovered in the word of God to one another. In Revelation chapter 1, uh, just been meditating that there's a prologue in the first three verses that tell us what the whole book's about and if we can and the benefit and the promise that's attached to the book. And there's an epilogue at the end of Revelation chapter 22. It says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servant. So Father God gave Jesus Christ a revelation, which Jesus gave to show his servants, things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John. So throughout the book of Revelation, there's an angel accompanying John, and this angel is the one whom Jesus sent to give the revelation that God the Father gave to him to John to give to his servants. And to uh, who bore witness, this John, bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ to all things that he saw. So there, Jesus, John now is saying, this is what happened, and this is what I'm about to record that happened, and I'm bearing witness to God's word, testimony of Jesus, and all things I saw. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. So that's... The prologue and the blessing now attached that that when we read the scripture and again when it says keep those things it's not like saying that we took what we heard and we figured out what it meant and we did exactly what we was said that would mean it was a works it was uh, predicated on our ability to understand literally the word keep means we guard something as very valuable there's a lot of valuable things that we have that we don't that we we hold them because of their great value. Maybe it's a, some jewelry, family heirloom. Maybe it's a precious memory. It's the, the scripture by far is the one thing Jesus always said: keep the word, keep my commands. That means to value, to guard, to just hold it so you always know where it is. Well, this prophecy is being given a blessing to us when we read it. And when we uh, keep it and hear the words or read aloud the words. So then he, he begins to address the seven churches. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, which is the first, first portion of this book. Chapters 2 and 3 are directly seven letters given by Jesus to, for John to communicate to the seven churches. But he went on to say, John to the seven churches, grace to you and peace from him who is and was and is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne. Beautiful imagery of Holy Spirit in the seven spirits of God. Uh, first brought to us in Isaiah. It's the same Holy Spirit, but it's a multifaceted ministry that he brings. Spirit of the fear of God, spirit of wisdom and counsel, the fear of not, the spirit of knowledge, spirit of power, and I think I'm uh, two others I forgot right now. But he says, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, which is who he is. He's the firstborn. That means we are being transformed into his likeness and the ruler of the kings of the earth. Whenever you're worried about what's happening on the earth, let's just remind ourselves: Jesus is the ruler over the kings of the earth. Not going to be. He currently holds that position. All things are now under given to him he has authority in all things to him who loved us that's our lord jesus and washed us from our sins in his own blood this this description of god holy spirit jesus is a perfect uh, means to ascribe to god who he is and begin to take the time to imagine what he's saying he loved me he washed us from our sins in his own blood and he made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him 
be glory and dominion forever and ever. So he made us kings and priests to his God and Father, and to him, Jesus, and God our Father, be glory and dominion forever and ever. Then a statement. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him, even so, amen. When this acceleration of his coming, where it begins to be seen in the clouds, this is going to be a very traumatic moment for the earth. Those who have rejected him, those who have not been accepting of him, there's going to be a strong coming that, that has a, a sense of um, like, it'd be just like an invasion that takes place. I am the Alpha, now Jesus speaking, and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Then John begins to share his position from where he received this revelation that the angel brought that God had given Jesus. I, John, both your brother and companion, in the tribulation kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. See, that beautiful kingdom of Jesus Christ brings tribulation. And that tribulation activates in us patience. And Jesus Christ, in turn, is our companion in tribulation, in the kingdom, and in the patience. That's why Ali, talking about that traveling through a wilderness, is a preparation to hear the voice of the Lord for about the expectation of what he was doing. I was in the spirit. Now, I love this about John because every one of us, if there's something to take away tonight, take this away with you. It doesn't matter where you are or what's happened to you or what was meant to happen because of what happened because everybody has their desire what would happen to you. He says he was on an Isle of Patmos. He said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I, did we miss verse 9? Can I? Yes, because I didn't finish it. That's my fault. I was on it, but I jumped ahead. I was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. So uh, tradition goes as far as to say that he was boiled in oil to try to kill him, but he couldn't. they couldn't kill him, so they exiled him, put him on an island, a prison island. And he was there because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ testimony of Jesus Christ, that which we have seen and heard of who Christ is in the scripture, by the spirit, in our time of prayer, in the proclamation of the word. That testimony is what's violently being fought against more so than almost everything. But it's word of God and testimony. They are one, but they're unique about what God has accomplished in the son. I was in the spirit. So he's in an island told to shut up and shut down, sit down, stop. But he's in that place. But he says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. So he was in a different place in the same place. He was a physical place, but he was in the spirit, which is so the key of keys in order to go forward with the Lord when we've been stopped physically or circumstantially some way. And many times you can, your soul shuts down. My soul is shut down so many times over life. And my flesh begins to be, grow weak. And I just feel like I don't know how to keep going. But the spirit, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, which is what we did when we come to pray. It's what we do when we uh, read the scripture. It's what we do when we accept the truth that we're reading as true and say, I accept it. We, we come out of the soul and its limitation, its tiredness, its rigidness, its brokenness, and out of the flesh and our weakness, and we come into the spirit. And he said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice of a trumpet. So the next thing that is always important, whether you're in service at your private prayer time tomorrow, reading the scripture tomorrow, is begin by, I'm, I'm in your Holy Spirit. I'm in the place you've given for me, prepared for me. I'm going to read and listen from the spirit. And then when you hear, and it could be a scripture jumps up, or it could be something that's in a, an, experience, an event that's happening, or something that is reminded. It says, I heard his voice with, as a loud voice of a trumpet. The next word is this, what did he hear? I, he was saying, I am the Alpha, the Omega, <clears throat> the first and the last, and what you see right in a book. 
and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Myrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, to Sardius, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice. Mark that. I turned to see the voice. How do you see a voice? I mean, we, we learn to... In other words, I'm turning to see what's, who's speaking to me because I'm hearing it from behind and I'm turning to see. And whenever we respond, you see, things that can be, come by us, we can ignore them and do nothing or we can turn to investigate. That's what he did. I came to him. Who, what is this? And having turned, had he not turned, he wouldn't have seen. Do you follow me? And having turned, I saw. So I turned to see and having turned, I saw. I turned so I could see, and when I turned, I saw. So that is a simple responding to what we're hearing, and it happens in scripture, it happens in prayer, it happens in worship. And in the midst of, I saw the seven gold lampstands, and in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment, down to the feet and girded about a, a chest with a golden band. <clears throat> I want to share a testimony about this. Several years ago, uh, about five years ago, I felt the Lord say, I, I, I want you to go to the scripture and just for, see me again, see me fresh. I didn't plan to come to here because this is the glorified image of Jesus Christ, or what you would call now post-crucifixion, post-resurrection. He's up into his ascension, seated at the right hand of the Father, high priest, king, royal priest, savior, Lord, having received the Holy Spirit. This is his day job and night job, his forever living to make intercession. This is a moment he's about to make intercession into John an experience and what he and so I begin to look at these things and it doesn't take too long and I'm going to encourage us all to practice this if you want to see Jesus let the Bible tell you to see him as the Bible speaks and so I saw him I'd say I saw him imagine the son of man clothed with a garment all the garments we ever see are white or like fire doesn't tell us the description of the color girded uh, it's all the way down to his feet, and he's girded with a golden band across his chest, which is a very reminiscent of the high priest image that we find in Leviticus and Numbers. And his head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow. So imagine with me something, the face, the head, the head and the hair, white like wool, but not just kind of a, kind of a funky, creamy wool. White as snow, bright, brilliant, light. And when I say those words and I ponder as I say them and I see what I'm saying, they're not like labels. They begin to open the door of pictures and experience. And his eyes were like a flame of fire, piercing, burning light in his eyes. His feet were like brass, as refined in a furnace. So you, they're alive, they're glowing, they're, they're, they're on fire. And his voice as the sound of many waters. The, again, if we can go to an audio that we've heard or we can recall, maybe Niagara Falls or, or a massive sound of many waters falling, crashing of waves. Something where lots of water is moving. It's the sound of many waters. That's his voice. And he had in his right hand seven stars. And it's out of his mouth. He's holding seven stars. He's in the midst of seven lampstands. Garment all to his feet. Golden sash. His face and his head. His hair, his head are white like wool and like snow. Out of his eyes are two are blazing fire. Sound of many waters, holding in his hand seven uh, uh, sh stars shining in strength. And it says, out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. So this, this is the, the word of God. This is that means to which God moves and speaks to us today and what we'll see later in, Roman, in Revelation 19. 
And he was like the sun shining in its strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me saying, don't be afraid. I am the first and the last. And I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. I have the keys of Hades and death. What a, be what a perfect beginning. Amen. What a perfect beginning to see the Lord high and lifted up. To see him in his exalted state. So we've got 10 minutes that I would like us to take a moment and break up. Share in small groups. It can be what we read. It can be what I'm just what we were just talking about. It could be uh, prayer request. If we break into groups of two or three or four people, then we have a chance to to hear from each other, pray for one another, and then advance in this book. My prayer, as and I'll be, meet with everybody online. My prayer for us all together, and I'd like to start by that, is that God would open the eyes, our eyes, to see, like He did. For for John on the Isle of Patmos, or he did Isaiah at the, at the, in, in the heavenly realm, or he did for the Apostle Paul. So, Father, would you do us this gift of the revelation to see Jesus high and lifted up, glorified, what you have accomplished in the Son and brought him into in his exalted state. Help us to see this in our daily prayer, as we approach you in our intercession and reading, this is who you are. This is who you will look like. And we are given the glimpse into your beauty and to your power. So we take this eyewitness report and we say, God, make it ours. Make us eyewitnesses of this truth in our own hearts. And as we share together tonight and pray one for another, we're saying in the name of Jesus, the the fullness of what you accomplished in these first four chapters in Revelation. Let them start breaking forth for each of us in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Well, let's go ahead, break, get together in small groups, find about three or four people, welcome each other, and then I'd love to talk to everybody online. All right. Bless, blessing. I, I take too long on that book of Revelation, that part, because I, don't, I just love this image of Jesus because when I see him like this I just it centers me back into whatever I'm going through that's who is walking with me that's my companion that's the one who is inside my tribulations inside the kingdom and inside the patience but since we can't talk back and forth and I do want to release the blessing let me give you just a couple more chapters, some overview. Chapters 3 and 4 are letters, seven letters to the seven churches. We can't take the time to do each letter. They were, they're really they're part of something Jesus has given John to communicate to seven churches, but they're for all the churches to hear. And so there's three phrases that speak to every church that I want to point out. First off... He will address the church uniquely about who they are and where they are and their function. But he says, in every address, he says, I know your works. I know your works. So when it comes to know me, he knows me from my heart, seen in my works. You can't hide your heart with your works your works and your heart will be one and seen in the lord so he knows me by my works that helps me because sometimes i think well i have good intentions but it's that leaves me uh free to uh not not fulfill my good intentions no he knows me in my works then he'll address them to uh an issue like the first church of ephesus is they have left their first love so he's saying now uh address this remember where you fell from in concerning the church of Ephesus and repent and do the deeds of first then he will say two other phrases there every every everyone hears these phrases every church so I hear them for me I know your works the next thing he says uh, he who overcomes so the overcomers are the focus of this uh, 
these letters to the churches to become overcomers, to be more than conquerors, to rise above what is pulling us down. I, to him who overcomes, and then comes a promise. And each promise is unique to each church, but each of us will find ourselves in all seven churches. I know I have. I know, I know, I know have. But then he says the third thing that he says to all seven churches, they're in every one of the seven letters in these two chapters. He says, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. So he is speaking to a church, but he's speaking to the churches, and it's what the Holy Spirit is saying. Have an ear to hear, to hear what he is saying. So I know your works, then here is the address of who you are, where you are, what you need to do. A lot of, most of the churches are like five of them repent. One of them holds your place. And then one is a reward for the little strength, keeping your word and not denying his name. And that they're going to be the one to um, have doors open. That's the Philadelphia church. But as you go through this, there's this interaction. And at the very end of chapter uh, 3, he says um, the instruction at verse 19 as many as I love I rebuke and chasten therefore be zealous and repent so as many as I love I rebuke and chasten that Jesus is going to interrupt where I am to bring me to where he is and it's going to be a uh, rebuke and a chasing it so what god loves he does is therefore be zealous and repent behold i stand at the door and knock if anyone hears my voice and i opens the door i will come into him and dine with him and he with me that is a script that is a promise to the believers who are being reproved or brought back into a, a right relation right fellowship with jesus and then the promise to him who overcomes I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. A unique promise to the overcomers of the Laodicean church to which I have identified with too many times in my life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So these letters are delivered. They're written, they're received, they're delivered. But now the revelation of, that was given to Jesus Christ is being now communicated. Chapter 4, we start a whole nother. It's not like the letters and then this happens. He's received the letters. But now that that part was done, something wonderful breaks loose. After these things, chapter 4, verse 1, I looked and behold the door standing open in heaven. After these things, I looked and behold, the door standing in heaven. This is an interactive experience the, the Apostle John is having, the, the angels causing him to see the revelation that God gave to the Son. Now he's setting the stage of the revelation being given. I saw the heaven open and a door open, and I heard it was like a trumpet speaking to me, like the first voice, like the one he heard behind him. Now he hears a voice from heaven saying, come up here. I will show you things which must play, take place after this. Immediately, I was in the Spirit. And behold, a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Now may I share what Revelation has been for me primarily as a book of, of impartation and strength. It's a book of worship. It's a book of worship to which I join in the worship that's going on in heaven. I walk through the sessions of worship that are found in the, in the many chapters, and I, I enter into them. Each of them are based on the revelation of God and Jesus Christ, and they're progressive. They get larger. They get louder. They get more impactful, and I walk with it. I started this 20-some years ago. At first, I wasn't sure if I really should do this or was because it seemed like, well, I'm just going to sneak in there and be a part of the, and I'd be off in the distance. But the more I've come to know who I am in Christ, that my place is to be with him in the, in the throne room, I have now uh, come to, to practice beholding. So there I am. There's the throne. 
But, and it's one, one sat on the throne. And he who sat on the throne was like jasper and sardius. It's like bright fire, red and orange stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow all around the throne. So I allow him, like the appearance of an emerald. That's like, could be moving in a circular way. It could be moving in a sphere. It was just like an emerald. And then around the throne, I'm going to close with this because we, we can't, but around the throne were 24 elders sitting on 24 thrones in white robes and they had crowns of gold on their head. So this, now imagine the 12, 24, these are there today. They're functioning thrones, functioning elders. And from the throne proceeded lightnings, thunders, voices. So out from the midst of, from, from the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And then seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne. So in front of the throne, which are the f flaming fire of the Holy Spirit, with which are the seven spirits of God. Then before the throne was a sea of glass like crystal. So glassy sea. In the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and back. So these four living creatures in front of the throne, I see the lion. Then there was over the lot, the the calf, or the, and then be, then there is the face of the man, and then there is the face of the eagle, and they have seven wings, six wings, and they have eyes within, eyes without, and they don't stop by saying, "Holy, holy, holy, Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come," and whenever they do, and they give the glory and honor and thanks to Him who sits on the throne, then the twenty-four elders fall down. And they, they take their throne, they come off their thrones and they take their crowns and they throw it to the throne and they say, you are worthy, O Lord. I to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and your will, they exist and we're created. And that's worship session one. And they keep going. Chapter five will introduce us into greater. Chapter seven chapter 11, chapter 15, and chapter 19, until we see the fullness of, of this new creation of the new millennial of the new heaven and earth in chapters 21 to 22. So we've run out of time. Let me bless you. Lord, I bless uh, your sons and daughters with eyes of their understanding to be enlightened, to be able to see and know what is this fullness of hope in this calling, in this inheritance, in this place. May our worship, may we be able to enter into the worship in heaven, be impacted by the truth of what is of God being seen as he is worshiped. May the revelation of what we see in God begin to impact us on who we are walking through this life. And then may the May all the praise and the glory, may Jesus Christ take preeminence and may this book of the revelation the Father gave to Jesus that he was to give to the, his servants by the angel fully find a, a resting place, a blessing in our life to cause us to become the overcomers, who cause us to be those who have ears to hear that can hear what the Spirit's saying to the churches, to those of us who can be known to, in our works, known in our life, not, not hiding from, but being known. Lord, I bless every one of us to allow these truths to happen and to give time for this and to see, to hear, and to turn, understand and turn that healing might abound in our life in every area. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. <clears throat> so I... I want to release a blessing to everyone. I know this is a closing time. You can continue praying. But Heavenly Father, thank you. That we are a people that are coming alive from within because Christ is dwelling in the midst of us. And you are finding Christ in the midst of us as we speak one to another of the things of what we're seeing and hearing and worshiping. Lord, carry us through the book of Revelation as we advance this coming week into the many facets of what is to see. And help us next Wednesday to come into the constitution of the kingdom, to see the very essence of how you are, the, the heart of the king, 
that denotes how the kingdom operates. May these things continue, advance us, and ready us as we gather together this Sunday in Jesus' name. God bless. Bless you eyes online. We'll see you Sunday. Bye-bye.